key project, TEA, stands for Trusted Execution and Attestation. It also happens to be the favorite drink of many software developers. That's why coffee, tea are commonly used as a project name, like uh, Java, CoffeeScript, Jasmine, Mocha, etc. In this video, we will discover uh, which problems T is trying to solve and how we solve it, what T will be used in the future. Blockchain has a short history that started about 10 years ago. It can be split into three stages, commonly called Blockchain 1.0, 2.0, and upcoming 3.0. The defining project of the Blockchain 1.0 is Bitcoin. Bitcoin marks that the first time in human history that decentralized trust is established, truly a revolution. However, Bitcoin only performs plus and minus operations, limiting its functionalities to fund transfers. In the blockchain 2.0 era, Ethereum ETH, takes the spotlight. Ethereum made a giant leap by introducing smart contracts that are able to do much more than Bitcoin plus and minus function. Smart contracts are touring complex virtual machines that can run relatively complex logic. That's why they are called contracts. Modern smart contracts are not perfect yet. Even simple logic may cost a lot of time and money. Contracts that require complex computation can barely run on blockchain 2.0 platforms. Use cases such as big data and AI require highly complex computation. Currently, they cannot be handled at scale. We need the blockchain 3.0 technologies. T is one of the solutions. The core atom of T project are decentralized trust, complex computation, and big data. As long as the issues that those topics raise are solved, blockchain technologies could be used across the board. Initially, this would have to be handled by the centralized platform. Building trust between computers is not a novel goal. There have been existing solutions in cryptographic algorithms and software and hardware technologies since the dawn of the computer age. I have listed a few in the picture, but there are more. While those technologies can each solve a particular part of the problem, any single technology carries significant limitations, either known vulnerabilities or by making computation very complex, to the point that it brings more costs than benefits. As cloud computing increases in popularity, more and more data is stored and processed in a centralized manner. All this data in one place is a big bait for hackers and bad actors. If they can break into one of their targets, they got a massive return on their investment. This is reflected in the increasing amount of the data breaches in recent years. We believe there is no single technology that can optimally balance security and the cost of on its own. The answer lies in combining multiple technologies into a layered solution. The technology in each layer can leverage its strengths and minimize the disadvantage by leaning on the technologies in other layers. Such a solution could be tweaked to reach the desired balance between cost, security, and performance. By leveraging the token economy made possible by the blockchain, we turn the security premises from very hard to break into to very expensive to break into. Users can set affordable yet secure enough balance point between cost and security based on their needs. The higher the price you pay, the higher the level of security you can get, and vice versa. The motivation of attackers is return on investment. Although breaking into a centralized computer system is very hard and costly, the benefit of successful attempt far exceeds the cost. On top of this, successful attackers can then easily break into other similar centralized targets using the same technology as the marginal cost of the attack is lowered. To sort the attacker's aspiration, we can combine existing technologies to do two things. 
We can increase the cost of attack attempts as well as decrease the benefit of successful attack. Once the benefit of a successful attack is lower than the total cost of such attempt, there is a negative ROI for the attackers. They will either give up or turn to other low hunting fruit. It's here that we find the T project's main purpose. We combine existing technologies into a multi layer solution to get the perfect balance between cost, security, and performance. This concept mirrors how blockchain builds decentralized trust. For example, hacking the Bitcoin ledger is technically doable, but economically improbable due to the cost. Bitcoin has been running for more than 10 years, and everything in Bitcoin is open sourced. Everyone knows how to modify the Bitcoin ledger, but never has it been successfully used for an attack. This is the beauty of blockchain consensus and token economy. When data is stored in a single known location, it becomes a big bait for the hackers. If we distribute the data across many different nodes, uh, we use IPFS with a small modification. Each node holds a small portion of the data and is protected by different technologies. Attackers have to get all or most of the uh, pieces of data to make an attack useful. This will significantly increase the cost of attack. And even if the attackers can hack into one location to get a small portion of the valuable data, this small portion is protected by the cryptograph and worth nothing unless combined with other portions of data to complete it. Attackers would still have to spend an equal or maybe higher amount to break into other locations or all locations to make the data valuable. Not to mention by using the zero knowledge algorithm, the attackers have no way to know if their current target is worthwhile or just a valueless bait. The risk, cost, and the benefit are not predictable. This can largely suppress the attacker's motivation. In this picture, we listed the technologies we use in the T project. We will go through them in the following slides. We have grouped our technologies into three categories made up of three chains. The first is blockchain, then the trust chain, and the last delegation chain. In the T-Project, the root of trust, ROT, comes from the hardware. The ROT generates a proof of trust, we call the POT part, which is then processed and stored by blockchain. Because the blockchain is immutable, the stored part can be always be verified and trusted. The hardware ROT can be TPM or the CPU TEE. We leverage the blockchain's immutability to do two things. The first thing is stores important trust data. Once the data is saved, there's no way to modify. The second is use smart contract to run governance and consensus. Token economy happens here. One more thing needs to be mentioned. The blockchain in the T project doesn't reach consensus on the result of the computing that is performed. Instead, it reaches consensus through the POT, which is all involved in nodes to ensure the entire workflow and execution environment is secure. The blockchain itself won't touch and store any secure data. The trust chain definition, as quoted from the Wikipedia, is as follows. In computing security, a chain of trust is established by validating each component of hardware and software from the end entity up to the root certificate. It is intended to ensure that only trusted software and hardware can be used while still remain flexibility. Currently, we accept TPM or, T or CPU TEE as the hardware root of trust. We know even the hardware ROT has vulnerabilities, so we combine the hardware trust chain with blockchain and the delegation chain together to minimize the risk of an acceptable level. The hardware root of trust generates a proof of trust data in the runtime. A proof of trust we usually call the POT part. The part data is stored and evaluated by the random remote verifier using blockchain consensus. The randomness of a remote verifier is guaranteed by both the blockchain and the delegation chain. The randomness can be verified too. 
The delegation chain is a network protocol. It guarantees that all the secrets are kept inside and transferred between verified trusted hardware modules only. The protocol also maintains verifiable randomness when distributing the data to its host, uh, we call PIN or repin. The entire data distribution flow can be traced by the series signature chain together. That's why it is called a delegation chain. Using the blockchain methodology, altering the traceable delegation chain data becomes hard once the chain is set. Due to the randomness and zero-knowledge nature, no one, including the node owner, can control or know what a node is currently running or about to run. The randomness and the zero technology increase the cost and the risk for potential attackers. The traceable delegation chain records are released to the blockchain after the computation is completed. And at that moment, all the data has been wiped out and attacking becomes useless. The T-Project is based on four modern technologies. In the first place, we have blockchain technology. There is a blockchain inside the T-Project we call the T-Layer 1 internally. It is developed on top of Substrate, a blockchain developer toolkit by Parity. Because T is based on Substrate, it will be effortless to communicate and collaborate with other blockchain in Polkadot ecosystem. Of course, this doesn't mean that TEA is limited to working with Substrate-based blockchain only. T can work with any client blockchain, or even with non-blockchain clients. Then again, it's easier when the client is Substrate-based due to the interchain communication protocol. An additional reason for choosing Substrate is that the protocol is developed using the Rust programming language and has WebAssembly as their compile target. These technologies are the same as what we use. We like Rust and WebAssembly too. Secondly, IPFS, Interplanetary File System, is used in our network and storage layer. We choose IPFS because it's a mature distributed storage solution with considerable community support. One of the T project's use cases is to add computing functionality to existing IPFS nodes. Adding a new definition to IPFS, lib P2P, the network layer of IPFS, is the base layer of our delegation chain network. In the third place, we have the hardware-based trusted computing technology. This is how the trust chain works. In our current demo, we use a TPM chip by Nature's Technologies on a Raspberry Pi as our testing environment. This doesn't mean we support TPM only, as any hardware trusted te computing technology could be applied. Granted that it can deliver a proof of trust on which other nodes can agree. In the T-Project, we don't decide whether a node is secure or not. We provide a consensus on what most other nodes agree. In other words, T is neutral to all trusted computing technologies. Last but not least is the isolated container technology. We choose WASIC WebAssembly runtime as our base. WebAssembly is new technology that are recently gotten attention in the blockchain and the cybersecurity area. WebAssembly brings us a higher level of isolation with security building. It also makes code smaller and portable to let T move VASM code around the network to fit different business needs. Once you have deployed your code to the T network, you can't and you don't need to know which T nodes host or run your code. All the workflows are handled inside the trusted, secure environment with zero knowledge protection. You can see this is significantly different than traditional cloud computing, where you know where code is being hosted and ran from. On the developer's end, there is no need to learn new programming languages because WebAssembly is a compiling target rather than the programming language. Most of the modern programming language can be compiled into the WebAssembly format. So you can see we have cherry-picked four of the top modern technologies in their respective sectors and combined them into three chains or tiers to form a new decentralized computing solution.
the T project. The T project not only leverage but also extends and enhances the aforementioned technologies. For client blockchains, the T project can be a layer two trusted computing oracle. T serves client blockchains by offloading complex computation to T's layer two, allowing clients to focus on business logic only. These complex computations would be either too slow or too expensive to run on traditional blockchain. Smart contracts can send computing tasks to the T network as if they were asynchronous internal RPC call inside their blockchain. The T network then does the heavy lifting and send the result back to the client blockchain with a series of proof of trust signatures. The client blockchain then can easily verify the POT to trust the outcome and then resume the intended smart contract process. This method opens up the ability to execute a lot of complex business logic that was previously considered impossible. IPFS is awesome. It allows you to store your code or data in the middle of nowhere. When you need it, you can get it from almost anywhere. The exact source is irrelevant. You can verify the hash to make sure that you are received exactly what you need. How cool is that? Still, IPFS is just a file system as of now. If you need to run your code, you probably have to load the code from IPFS to some centralized cloud service like Amazon, Google, etc. If you could run your code directly inside the IPFS, you would be able to get the result directly saving your code from an unnecessary trip to the centralized and probably vulnerable computer servers. After all, you don't really need the code. What you need is a result, right? We have designed a hardware TEA module that can be plugged into existing IPFS nodes. The module is protected by hardware trusted computing technology and the T software consensus. The code and data can be decrypted and run inside the trusted environment. These workflows are monitored and verified by other trusted T nodes driven by the T consensus algorithm. You can send a request to IPFS node and expect the function result as a response instead of the source code. This is how the file system, the FS in IPFS, it's converted to a new FS, which is we mean a function service in new IPFS. Proof of trust, POT or POT, is the essential security related data collected from the hardware security chip. Unlike traditional attestation performed by the owner, we use blockchain consensus to select a remote attestation verifier, or we call RA nodes to attest the POT. Every single verifier sign its result and commit to the blockchain. Once the blockchain receives enough verification to run the BFT algorithm, the result is posted on the blockchain. Therefore, no one can predict who will be the verifier of the dataset, leaving no room for collusion. Before remote attestation, the testee need to post its claim on the blockchain. The claims is what software and hardware stack he's using. The POT to support its claim is sent to the RA nodes. And the RA nodes test if the POT matches its claim. If the POT matches the claim, the RA nodes will send the positive result to the blockchain. Positive means the claim is valid. Other T nodes can check the claim of a node to decide whether to trust or not. In the T project, most of decisions are made in a decentralized manner. Every node can determine trust or not trust on its own business logic. The RA process is to attest a node claim is honest. Therefore, T is security technology agnostic. As long as there is a consensus, any technology can be used. We don't tell you if a node is trustable or not. We just tell you what it is claimed and whether the claim is correct or not. 
From there, you made your own decision. TIS Trusted Computing Services is similar to traditional cloud computing services, but decentralized. You don't need a centralized form of trust. Instead, we use TIS hardware and software components. A decentralized cloud service is one of the first business models that come to my mind. However, we are not looking to run the next Amazon EC2 or Google Functional Service. We focus on the business model of the decentralized world, just like Uber and Airbnb, uh, the largest taxi company and hotel chain respectively. They don't own any cars or hotel room. We don't need to own any T node either. Anyone can download the source code from our GitHub and run their own T node from anywhere. The trust doesn't come from a user's reputation or geolocation. The trust comes from the hardware and the blockchain consensus. We link all these T nodes together to become the world's largest trusted computing network. Just like IPFS provides file storage, we provide interplanetary computing services. Taking things one step further than Uber or Airbnb did, we decentralize the management to DAO, the Decentralized Autonomous Organization. This is possible because the system runs on the blockchain. We don't need to take a 30% cut from our node owner's revenue as Uber did. We will talk more about the business model in our next video. Please stay tuned.